Okay, it's the uh, Thursday vlog, although it's actually Wednesday when I'm filming this. And I love Wednesdays because after a structured uh, Tuesday vlog and Wednesday vlog, this is the Thursday vlog and I get, wow, what a beautiful day. I get to do whatever the hell I want to do. Let's start this with a B-roll. I learned a lot from that Peter McKinnon uh, B-roll challenge contest, which, by the way, I did not win. Um, but one of the real surprising facts about that, which Peter says himself, 450,000 video makers entered that contest to win that count. And that is just a fraction of the incredible amount of people making videos on YouTube. And what's even more eye-opening is many of these, I, I, there's no way you can humanly watch all these B-rolls. But from the ones I've seen, and I, and I chose them, I tried to choose them randomly and just pick you know, random uh, people just to get an accurate picture of what was ha what was on uh, YouTube. This is just a small fraction of the video makers. And many of them were very good. I'd say probably half of the ones, I'm a, I'm a, I guess I looked at about 100, which is nothing. Um, but the numbers are surprising. About 50 of them were good, maybe. Two out of a hundred were great. I mean, pro level stuff here. And that just shows you the incredible amount of video makers on YouTube. And the issue with that, if you take this thought further, is that about 20 of them are getting all the action. They're getting all the views, all the making all the money getting all the subs. You know, Casey Neistat gets over 5,000 new subs per day. And this, this, these numbers are crazy. So in order to break through this mess and be the 21st person to be making serious money on YouTube, you're going to have to find something that's just better, that's just different, that's just so unique and so great um, that you enter that exclusive club, almost like an old boy network now, where nobody can really, and it's not to say we're competing with, I mean, you can be a sub to me and a sub to any, any other person, um, so it's not like, well, I get less because you get you get more, so share them. It doesn't work that way. You can you can subscribe to as many bloggers or video makers that you want to subscribe to. But the people getting their searches are people established as the old time greats. So when people get on, they want to see a blog, they search for a famous blogger and that's what they get. So where does that leave the rest of us, the ones struggling to not compete but survive in this network of creators. And that's a troubling uh, question and a more troubling answer. But what's happening on YouTube is the, it's not being spread out. The subs are not being spread out. People are very, very reluctant to subscribe to you unless you are absolutely freaking great. So you have to floor them. You have to knock them on their ass and you have to you have to establish yourself 
as a as this creative force that no one and no one else is feeling no one else is as good as you. No one else is doing what you're doing. And uh, it's, a, it's a difficult thing. You can't copy. You can be influenced by people all day long. We are. None of us would be doing this if we weren't influenced to, to do it uh, in some way or another. And that comes from other people. Uh, but you can't. You, you, there's something about you that absolutely has to be not only unique, but as Donald Trump likes to use this word, tremendous. You have to be tremendous. There's tremendous bloggers out there that can't get 100 subscribers. So how do I get this 1,000? Just 1,000. How do I get a million? How do I get 10 million if tremendous people aren't getting shit? Because no one's looking for some unknown person making videos. No one says, hey, I'm going to subscribe to him because I don't want to miss a video unless you're absolutely incredible and unless you figure out a way for them to find you or for you to find them. So it's, a, it's an issue that, that's troubling. It, what I want to believe is probably much different than the facts of the situation. There's a two-fold question here, and you have to do it because you're a creator and you love to do it. That's one thing. Um, so you're going to do it for free, and you're going to do it just because you love to do it, and you're going to try to get better, and all that's great. But is there a limit to that? Would you do it every day of your life for the rest of your life for nothing at all? You see what I'm saying? There's a big difference there. So, okay, you're an artist willing to struggle, willing to pay your dues, and willing to do it for absolutely nothing until you get recognized and start making money and then continue to do it. But what if you never, ever make a nickel? Will you, how long will you continue to do it? That's the big question. At some point, will you say, okay, this market is way, way too watered down. It's impossible to get recognition. I'm still going to create, but I'm going to do, I'm not going to do vlogs anymore. I'm going to do something where I have a better chance of being recognized. You love the camera, obviously. You won't be doing it. If you love whatever kind of vlog you're making. You're doing it 
because you love to do it and you're not making a nickel and you're willing to sacrifice, you're willing to pay to do his butt for how long? For a year, two years, five years, 30 years? Until the day you die? So you have the best camera, you know how to use it. You have some good ideas. Now what's gonna, what's gonna set you apart? What's gonna make you better? What's, what are you gonna do great that no one else is doing? And is that going to get people talking, or is there more to it? What do you do that hasn't been done? And then, let's say you get to the top. Let's say you break you break the walls and you, and you make it. And what's going to keep you at the top? How are you going to continue to push the boundaries? I think this is what a lot of these guys, even the ones at the top, are struggling with. And that's how kind of Logan Paul got in trouble. And, but, I mean, those guys are fine. Let's talk about... The, small, the millions of small creators and let's not talk about the 20 people getting all the views you can go out and get a drone you can travel to the most beautiful exotic beach and it's all been done and it's been done by the best you gotta come up with a way to be better than the best so what is it about you that you do better than anyone on the face of the earth what the hell whether you believe in God or not, what the hell brings you here? What makes you different? What makes you the best? What makes you great? And I think I think we're missing the point with going out and buying the latest equipment and the best computers and the best cameras just to do it just like everybody else is doing. I don't know. I mean, you can go out and buy a guitar and play other people's music. Basically, you're playing the same notes somebody else played, maybe just in a little bit of different order. So are you creating a whole new genre of something? Is there something you do naturally that makes you great? And there's a, there's hundreds of thousands of people who sing Bob Seger songs, but no, none of them, not one single one of them is Bob Seger. So they're all broke and Bob Seger's rich. There's probably a whole lot more going on here than I know about, you know about, any of us know about. What is it? So you go to YouTube or you go to a convention of a million creators and you're looking around and well there's that guy that makes blogs and that used to make you special but now you're in a convention where that guy makes vlogs, she makes vlogs, he makes vlogs everybody you see at this convention makes vlogs so it's like okay yeah but that guy there in the red shirt is the greatest because because why you can say well because he gets three million views per video why did he just get here first fill a growing demand or is there something about him or her that truly is great and if they all have the same camera and they all have the same drones and they all have the same computers and they're all basically doing the same thing they're making videos what makes her the best so all the all the great equipment i mean that, that doesn't certainly doesn't hurt anything and it does help you to a degree but there's something more going on here and I'm not sure any of us are aware of. Uh, is it simply their high energy personalities? Is it the fact that they know how to market a thousand times better than you do? At least one of the top shelf creators has said it's in the editing. But I think that's just part of the story. I know what that person is saying. But I mean, if, if any of them go and tell everybody what what it is. They're gonna have millions of people taking their spots off YouTube. If you're a fan of more than one of the top vloggers, and by top vloggers I mean those who have two million or more subscribers, then you'll, you've probably noticed that they're all doing one thing lately and they're missing days. And so as a small creator who doesn't really know what's happening, you're most likely asking yourself, well, why would any of these guys miss a single day when 
they're making thousands and thousands of dollars off an 8 or 10 minute video. Why would you even think about missing the day? Why would you risk losing subscribers? Um, wh why not just, you know, do whatever you're doing and make, you know, a, a quick whatever YouTube is paying them. It's thousands and, and thousands of dollars per vlog. Well, it, why, why would anyone miss that? Why would anyone miss an opportunity to make that kind of money any day of the year, any day of their life? Um, and I think what's happening is something that not we're not seeing. I think there's all seeing an end of this road, and that's sad within itself. Um, but I think they're seeing something happening and concluding that this cannot possibly last forever, so I need to put my focus totally on something that is going to last forever and move on from here. This was temporary. It was great. I loved every minute of it. But I have to think about tomorrow, and I think they're all thinking about tomorrow. So what do they know that we don't? Yeah, man, I, I don't think it's just normal burnout. You get burn out on doing anything, no matter how much you love, if you do it often enough. But still, you know, you're talking a lot of money. So if you say, okay, well, I want to spend the day on the beach and just get away from this for a while, well, all it takes is a little bit of filming on the beach to make a great vlog and to keep your fans happy. So why wouldn't you do that when we're talking some serious money? And you can say, okay, well, I don't like the editing process and I'm burnt out on that part, so I'm not going to do it today. So what are you going to do? Are you going to work at McDonald's? Well, what the hell are you going to do that's going to make the money that you're making vlogging? And how could it be worth missing all these days? So then it goes to the question, well, if whatever is happening is happening, and if, if, if that's the case, if it's something I don't know about, is this good for new vloggers or upcoming vloggers? Or is it bad? Should I do something else too or should I just keep pushing this so if big creators are now preoccupied on something else and they're basically dropping the ball on vlogging you have to know that these people aren't altogether dumb I mean they made a whole lot of money doing what they do what they love to do and they became great at it, so why not continue? Why, why not keep doing what made you great? What made you famous? What made you rich? Maybe they know there's nowhere else to go. I mean, they've jumped out of planes, they've walked in the war zones, they've, they've swam with the sharks, they've, you know, they've gotten all the incredible aerial footage, they they made all the fascinating vlogs. They made everybody want to be like them. What else? Where else can you go? And how can a smaller creator, an unknown creator, somehow top all that? Maybe it's untoppable. Maybe it's a dying art. Maybe Google is ending AdSense. Maybe none of them are going to tell you because it. It would break a lot of dreams if that was the case. That there is nowhere else to go. That, you know, they've jerked off as much as they can jerk off and it's over. There's a guy on Twitch who live streams 10 minutes a day. Not saying anything. Not doing anything. Except eating a head of lettuce. Yeah, lettuce. That's what he does. He eats a head of lettuce every time he streams. And the people sit and they watch him and they flock into his channel and they watch him eat a damn head of lettuce and that's it. It's over. And your first 
thought as an artist is to say, what a fucking idiot. Why, why, why are people even watching? But is he saying something? Is there a statement here? Is, is he conveying a message to all the other live streamers and there's so many of them? Have we taken this as far as it can go? A handful of people got a hold of it. And that's it. And they're going to keep it until the end. And is the end coming? We have all these issues as creators. And I've, I've been creating a long, long time. And you, you can listen to a smash hit song. Whitney's Houston's I Will Always Love You, okay? And it's the same notes everybody else plays, but she plays them in a different order, and she has a unique voice, and she sings it, and it's emotional. Um, how many Whitney Houston's are left? Are you the new Whitney Houston, or are you an imitation of a Whitney Houston? Can you put those notes in a better order, or have they been put in the best order? This is not me being a negative dick. This is me looking for the truth and looking for something more. And I think it's time to face it that it's not about what we want. It's about what the people want. And, I mean, I want to I wanna ramble on and on about interesting things that I find interesting and post uh, pretty pictures of flowers and wildlife. Uh, but it, it doesn't matter what I want. It really doesn't matter what I want. The ones who hit a great big, they were doing what they want, and it just so happens that that's what the people wanted too. Is there an end to that? And there's so many, so many, so many vloggers out there. Let's just say there's four million vloggers. I don't know what the number is. It's a big number. Uh, but let's just say there's four million of us. Have the people had their fill of what is the market dry it up i mean if 20 alcohol companies are making all the alcohol that the people can consume how does a new alcohol company where where do they fit you see what i'm saying here the only hope for that new alcohol company to compete is to do something absolutely extraordinary i mean extraordinary but what what how extraordinary can alcohol be? You know what I mean? If you're making a bucket and you know 20 companies, 20 other companies are making buckets the best they can at the lowest price they can, how the fuck are you going to compete with them? And why would they even try your bucket when they're quite happy with the other company's bucket? So this is where my mind is at: is what, how, unique, creative, interesting. And get gets people talking. I mean, and not just talking. And John's an okay book. I mean, talking like you have to see this. Take ten minutes every time. You sit down in this chair and watch this. It will. I don't know. Do something. It will change your life. It will. It will entertain you like you've never been entertained. It will astonish you. It will leave you with no other choice but to tell someone else. What do you do? Do you have a camera? Do you have an editing program? Uh, do you have a computer? Uh, do you even have a drone? And do you have the best camera on the market? What do you do? They've seen the prettiest flowers. They've, they can see them anytime they want. There's four million other guys posting pretty flowers. What do you do? So you're a big, huge creator, and YouTube's been good to you, and everything is great for now, but there is an end. What do you do? All you really know how to do is make YouTube videos, so what do you do? And now you have three kids and a wife. You have no real secure source of income. Well, you can always sell high-tech selfie sticks. You can always sell cameras. And there's millions and millions of video makers coming after you, having no clue what the hell they're getting into, and that there's no real future in it because the whole market's been milked. 
watered down and uh, the people have gotten what they came for and they're going elsewhere. What do you do? I know there's something I'm missing there. Uh, what it is, is, is the quest I'm after. And I'll do it if there's a way to outperform the Logan Pauls and the, and the, and uh, and then not that it's a competition, but they are monopolizing the available view time on YouTube. No one goes to John Disk's channel. They don't even know John Disk exists. They come on the internet looking for Logan Paul's latest video and they find it. And then they go about their way. Why would anyone even give a shit about your YouTube? I would have brought my tripod, but I didn't. So, sorry, my camera's so shaky. I don't know, I think I've got a better way. Just bear with me.
Had a lot of trouble keeping the camera steady. I did the best I could without a tripod. Next time, live and learn, bring a tripod. What I was waiting to get was that eagle back there is uh, him swooping down to the water and grabbing a fish, taking it back to the nest. Eagles have huge, huge nests, like 20 feet around, you know, just crazy big nests. And uh, they perch way, way, way up high, like on top of that bridge, so they can see the fish swimming down under the water, and they can swoop down and snatch one. That's why they're up there, and it protects them from prey, but mostly it's about honey. They can see everything going on down there. So it's just easy, easy pickings. If they're in the mood for fish, they'll get them a fish. Next time, we're going to get us the Snatch Down Gravel. YouTube violence with a purpose. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be viral. Do you know how many YouTubers got footage of an eagle flying down at 90 miles an hour to snatch a fish out of the water? Uh, one, two, three. I don't know. How the hell am I supposed to know? I don't know. People will talk about my fucking stuff. Give me a high five. Give me No, it has not all been done. The market is watered down. There's a lot of pretenders. There's a lot of vlogger burnout. There's a lot of people doing their best and not getting anywhere. There's a handful of people kind of monopolizing the action on YouTube as far as vlogging goes. Um, and I think it's because we're not pushing the boundaries. We're not being creative enough. And I have some ideas. Most of them are going to take a collaboration. I have some things running around my head that have never been done. And I want to do my best to get them. And I want to start doing things a little bit different. Peace.